Greetings friends and welcome to the realistic physical explosion tutorial. A baboon. So friends, the situation is we have a chap who is unprotected and then another chap who is behind a wall. Now typically when we use a force apply as we have here on the right, it's going to be applying the force of an explosion indiscriminately. Whether you've got a wall in front of you or not, you're going to get whacked by this explosion. These force suppliers are really great, super useful, but they don't give you that physical cover system sort of vibe, where if you're behind another object or wall or you know any sort of cover that you have some sort of protection from the force, it doesn't really matter. With our realistic explosion that we've got on the left and that I'm going to show you how to use, you have more of that sense of protection. So we have a wall over here and only when this wall is destroyed will our chap start to be in trouble. So as you can see at this stage, this guy's already getting knocked into next week, whereas this guy is totally protected. But of course, when the wall collapses, oof, he gets knocked over. So it's a subtle difference, friends, but you can really mess around with it. So for example, if you change the weight of this, for example, you can make it so that this wall is a lot tougher and a lot harder to like knock over and take out this chap. You can of course make it lighter, so on and so forth. All of these things will go over and make it practically useless. Boing! And he just gets knocked over entirely. Nevertheless, what this realistic explosion does is it adds more physicality to the explosion. It makes it more realistic and it makes cover more of a thing. But alrighty friends, let's get stuck into it. A whoop whoop! I also want to say a big thank you to Jafar5953 who initially asked this question about walls and cover and explosions and got my mind thinking. So thank you friends, ask and you shall receive. Okay friends, so here we are. We have a wall and a little chap over here and we have another chap on the left who doesn't have a wall. Now with the good old-fashioned force applier that we generally use in our explosions what we can get is a really cool effect of you know physical objects getting blown around doo -doo -doo, and that's very cool but one of the problems is and where it's like not very realistic is that the chap who was behind a wall he got yeeted with the exact same force as the dude who wasn't behind a wall. And if we want this to be more physically, uh, shall we say, accurate, we would want it to be so that the wall first has to be knocked over. And then once that's been knocked over and it falls on this chap, then he'll start to feel the physical effects of getting knocked over by the explosion. Or not even the explosion, but the wall itself falling over. So to use that, we're not going to uh, have a force applier and use it in the same way that we sort of always have. What we're going to do is we're actually going to make the zone size a lot smaller. We're going to make it teeny tiny. And then within this teeny tiny zone, we're going to put a few objects, physical objects, movable and collidable. And they're going to get blasted out from within the space. And it's going to be them hitting objects that makes it sort of more physically realistic. Bits of shrapnel. Hence, I call it the sort of shrapnel technique. So what we're going to use is nothing special, nothing fancy. We're going to go into sculpt mode. We're going to grab a sphere. We're going to make it red just so that the colors are easy to distinguish. And then we're going to go to guides and grid snap. I'm going to make it kind of small. Lovely stuff. Now L1 and square on this bit of shrapnel. We're going to go to physical properties. We're going to make it movable. We're also going to increase the density. So because the density is increased, that makes it sort of have more of a physical impact when it hits objects. We don't want it to be like a ping pong ball. We want it to be like a piece of heavy metal. So now that we've got that in order, we are off to a great start. So this is what we're going to call our little piece of shrapnel. The size can vary. You don't have to worry if it's if it looks silly or whatever, because I actually prefer to make it invisible once we've got all the sort of systems in place and let the animation of the explosion have the sort of visual impact and these invisible little shrapnel balls will have the physical impact. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my little ball, I'm going to make a copy of it with R1 and R2 and then I'm going to put them in a group. Now I'm going to go into this group and I just make it a group so when we have a whole bunch of them I don't have to group them all together and so on and so on. So now I'm going to go into this, I'm going to put one on top. I'm going to try and make it so that it's aligned to the grid actually. So let me go R2 a one triangle, lovely stuff. Now I'm going to go 
over here. Trying to align this to the grid. So I can't get it exactly in the middle. So I'll go L1 down on the D-pad and then I will align them like this. Cool, cool, cool. And so now I'm creating sort of like a bit of a, a bit of a cross shape. I'm gonna have one over here as well. And here as well. And now I've created a sort of geometric -y sort of shape. And what I want to happen is that we have our little force applier. And this force applier is going to be applying some of its goodness. That little that little zone of, of force, as we mentioned earlier, directly in the center of our little geometric shape of shrapnel that we've made here. Now the power is going to be quite strong. And we're going to see what happens. It sort of shoots out a few bits of shrapnel. And that's looking cool. It's already having the effect of knocking that dude's foot out from under him. But because our chap over here has a wall in the way, he only gets sort of like a glancing blow. Which is very, very cool. Now the sky is the limit, or really the thermo is the limit with this technique. Because you can create uh, even more bits of shrapnel. All that you need to do is um, add extra bits. And you can do it like so, and you can do it like so. And the only thing that you need to watch out for is that the, uh, that the uh, because these are all physical objects, you don't want to use up too much thermo at once. You can create all sorts of cool explosions. And if you feel like it's a little bit too thermo heavy, you can go into your objects, L1 and Square, go to Physical Properties, and you can actually make the physics cost low. And that makes it so that these objects don't have as many sides. So for example, if I make it high, you can see there's all sorts of little shapes in there. If I make it medium by default, it has that amount of sort of internal shapes. It sort of ways that it can roll and interact. And if you make the physics cost even less, then it'll have even less of an impact on the thermo. This doesn't have to have a huge uh, th uh, thermo cost. You can make it low. Um, and that's because all it's doing is hitting an object. We aren't worried about how these roll around and sort of interact themselves because they're going to be invisible anyway. It just basically needs to be a physical object. Lovely stuff. Add a little bit over there. Another one over there. Maybe a little bit over here. Uh, shall we do it like that? Or move it up a bit? I mean, you can really just experiment and see how the how the vibe goes. You kind of create like a uh, the the general vibe is you create almost like a bit of a circle or like a sphere to mimic the sort of size or the, sorry, not the size but the shape of the explosion itself. So this is going to explode outwards. It's going to knock things over, and it's going to be sort of interacting with objects physically by having this, you know, literal physical presence. So you can create a little bit more. You can also throw in some like random ones, if you know what I mean. You don't, they don't all have to be geometric like I've done over here. Um, you can add in some, some craziness to make it a bit more interesting. And by craziness, what you could do is you could like make one over here and then make another over here and then press uh, left on the D-pad a bunch of times. And now you've got like almost a whole ring of them put this over here in the front and like look at that now that's crazy just keep in mind of course that um, with with each of these little physical objects it's important to not have too many of them because if you have a whole bunch you can actually end up making the the game say whoa there's too many physical objects right now it's a little bit too much to deal with and your uh, game can actually slow down or physics can stop working properly luckily the thermo cost of these particular balls isn't too high so the game is surviving Another technique that you can use, and actually this is pretty much the way to do it, is you quickly make this a group, and then when you want this explosion to be taking effect, what you're going to do is grab yourself an emitter from movers and output. So you grab an emitter, you will emit this explosion, our little bits of shrapnel, you're going to say emit speed zero, you're going to say emit mode once, but you're going to say object lifetime, and you can make it like 0.3 seconds, it doesn't have to be long. For example, just like that, you get the effect of the explosion, these little bits of shrapnel, there's no point in them sort of rolling around the map um, indefinitely, rolling around the sort of scene indefinitely, because it doesn't really have any effect after that. All you really need is that initial burst of them moving around, and um, after that, like, you pretty much don't need them. So now you can really get the sense of, like, the sort of physicality of the explosion, because you could now copy this wall. And, well... <laughs> Okay, I guess it doesn't really help because they all just get rocked. What you could do is increase the weight of this wall. 
and you'll see that it's a little bit tougher. Of course, the, this poor guy isn't really helped by the fact that this wall falls over anyway, but now you'll see this dude, he's already, he's already been, had his foot, you know, knocked out from under him, but this guy, he's still got that wall protecting him, or at least for a few fractions of a second, and then he's like, ugh, and then only he gets knocked over, whereas this dude, he's already fallen to pieces. So as you can see, using the sort of shrapnel technique that, that I've just described, you can really get a more physical, realistic uh, explosion that takes into account physical objects, cover, all of that sort of business. Just remember to keep in mind that shrapnel should be low thermal, that it should be, uh, uh, the objects need to be physical and they need to be collidable, and it's your own preference whether they're visible or invisible. I'm keeping them visible in this situation just to demonstrate it. But, um, for example, we could go to search, we could grab ourselves uh, an explosion. Uh, Media Molecule has a whole bunch of very cool ones. You could slap that explosion down, I suppose, wherever you like. But uh, if you want to make it part of your shrapnel, we're going to go show and hide, turn off preview invisibility, grab our little explosion, as we've got over here. I want an X on the shrapnel group, and we can just add in our explosion over here. Maybe align it so that it's good and good and neat, good and central. So now we go. We get the we get that explosion vibe. And not only that, it sort of knocks over these various objects. You might want to actually make this ever so slightly larger, so it feels like they're getting hit by the explosion and not just sort of by the air next to the explosion. So now we go boom, boom. Alrighty friends, well that's pretty much all that there is to it. We're getting uh, much more that sense of like a realistic physical explosion. Uh, if you want to change the size of your explosion, for example, you go to your emitter and you can grab it like so and maybe just increase it ever so slightly. And then you can have an even more sort of powerful effect like we have over here. And that's looking pretty sweet, friends. If you want to have a slightly smaller explosion, of course, you use your emitter um, as you see as you see fit. You place it sort of try and place it centrally between them. If you see it's like it's not quite reaching there, you can of course once again change the position, change the size, all of these all of these things, all of these considerations. That's looking very nice. Ish. And if you know, depending on the kind of impact that you're getting from the objects, you might want to change the density of them to um, have more or less of a reaction to them you know you can have one wall that's made out of wood and one that's made out of brick for example and they have different sort of densities and can protect someone less or more uh, these these sorts of things are more for like maybe physics based games or where you want to have uh, sort of physics involved more specifically or animations who knows and um, you know it's uh, it's pretty fun. It's cool because you can see the difference here where the wall is sort of crumbling and this dude is fine at this stage, but this guy, whoop, RIP and peace to this chap. Lovely stuff. And so friends, um, that's pretty much all that there is to these sort of physical uh, explosions. And uh, yeah, as for other tweaks that you can make, you can of course make the shrapnel invisible, just these little balls uh, invisible. You can make it so that the they last a little bit longer, the emitted object lifetime, so that they hang around for slightly longer. They can maybe reach like a little bit further, that sort of business. Um, and it's really uh, all up to you, friends. I'm gonna leave them. I'm gonna leave them on just to sort of demonstrate the uh, the range and the the sort of effect. But it's totally up to you, friends. And you can throw these in your games and just have a bit more of a uh, a cool time with your physics and your explosions. Yes. But thank you so much, friends. Uh, I had fun making this short video. It's nice to work on a video that isn't like, you know, two hours long and that requires weeks of filming and editing. Uh, I just did this pretty much in an afternoon, which is what it used to be like until I became a very sweaty boy making long form videos and that. But it's been fun to do some short ones. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for your support as always. And let me know if there's any other concepts that you'd like to make. Um, yeah, or, you know, ideas and, you know, other tutorials, so on and so forth. Let me know what you're struggling with, what you're trying to do, and I'll see if I can make a video for you. Thank you so much, friends. Peace out.